last. <laughs> I can access the dark web. <laughs> I accessed the dark web using only my Raspberry Pi. Here's how I did it and why you shouldn't. The dark web is the playground for the dangerous and illegal. Now, as long as you don't engage with anyone or anything on the dark web while browsing, the dark web is perfectly safe to look at for educational purposes. But it is where the real bad guys go to do their real shady business. <laughs> so tread lightly. It's deep, it's dark, it's webby. So even if you think you're being safe, you might accidentally get some dark cobwebs on you if you're not careful. Now, what is the dark web? It's basically just a bunch of websites that you can only access using special means. The web pages on these sites are not indexed by any standard surface web search engines, like Google or other popular search tools. So they won't display any results or pages within the dark web. So how do we access it then? With the Onion Router, of course, developed by a couple of MIT grads and a Navy-funded researcher, the Onion Router in its free-to-install Tor browser is an internet browser much like Chrome and Firefox, but it has added features to make it more private and secure. Say goodbye to tracking, surveillance, and censorship. Tor protects your identity online, specifically your IP address, by encrypting your traffic in at least three layers and bouncing the traffic through a chain of three volunteer computers chosen among thousands across the world. Now, some of of you might be thinking, that just sounds like somebody using a VPN. Well, the idea is the same, but Tor is more private. Having three random nodes bouncing your traffic makes it more difficult, if not downright impossible, if done right, to track your activity back to you. Whereas in a standard VPN scenario, aka VPN provider's server, should that VPN log any of your user data, governments and anyone else who has access to those logs could trace your activity back to you. So for that reason, Tor is more private as there are no logs, simply three nodes that push your traffic to the site that you're trying to visit. However, it is entirely possible that the nodes have been compromised and can expose your data. And if that's the case, your browsing history could be reconstructed and routed back to you. But we're mad hats. We don't get compromised. We do the compromising. <laughs> Legally, of course, because <laughs> it's our job. You sure about that? To avoid these potentially compromised nodes that are either controlled by some black hat lint lickers or government, you can use the Tor browser via VPN. Yeah, I know. Some of you might be screaming right now. Now, there are a lot of VPNs in the world free ones, paid ones, data mining ones, but we'll be using NordVPN because it's based in Panama, so it falls outside the surveillance of the five eyes, the nine eyes, and the 14 eyes. If you don't know what the eyes are, they're just a group of allianced governments. NordVPN also doesn't store users' data, so even if one of the governments does come a snooping, they wouldn't have anything to find. What about your user data? Well, they accept cryptocurrency as payment. <laughs> Good luck finding me, old man. So if you want to be like Mad Hat, click the link down below and snag yourself a subscription while they have their Black Friday discount. Now, I know there's free VPNs available, but you get what you paid for. And with the free ones, they're more likely to sell your data and have slow as dirt connections. And there's nothing more irritating than a slow internet connection. You'll also come to know how slow the connection is over the Tor browser, which is caused by obvious reasons. A VPN is so simple yet so effective. <laughs> VPN will shield your data as it enters that first node. Your ISP and government has no way of knowing that you're using Tor, only that you're using a VPN. And good VPNs can even obfuscate that. We don't want the government knowing what we're doing since we don't want to end up on some watch list. Although I'm pretty damn sure I'm on that list by now. Now, when your data enters the entry node, it will show the IP of the VPN server and not your personal IP, meaning that IP is hidden and it can't be traced back to you. It's like a double shroud of darkness. And if there's one thing we computer nerds like, it's darkness. But as we all know, the government has a lot of tricks up its sleeve, money and lots of it. So they've got some expensive methods of tracking your browser history down, even with the use of a VPN and using Tor Browser. As all of you probably know by now, your computer stores pretty much everything that you do, and your operating system is the main problem. Windows, Linux, Mac, they all have the same problem. They all store your activity in caches and references and memory. So even if you try to delete and wipe the activity off of your computer, your operating system leaves traces of that activity and what you've been doing. Now that doesn't sound very private to me, and we're aiming for total anonymity here. This is where we bring in Tails, the operating system of our dreams. 
also developed by the Tor Project. With Tails, everything you do disappears automatically when you shut down. No more writing the hard disk. Everything done in Tails is stored in computer memory. So when you shut down, your activity is wiped <laughs> since computer memory be like that volatile and we like volatile memory erasing any hopes of the chinese government from raiding your house to find hard evidence of you posting anything about political reform god forbid we have an open discussion about the state of our government in recognizing a communist physical appearance counts for nothing if he openly declares himself to be a communist he may be a communist now we've got tails the tor browser and a vpn let's whip out every ethical hacker's favorite piece of equipment the raspberry pi and let's get everything set up wait 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 what the fuck? <sighs> Okay, so Tails cannot be ran on the Raspberry Pi's ARM architecture. No shit, Sherlock! Yet. Honestly, I, I don't know if they'll ever release an operating system version of it that runs on the Raspberry Pi. But we're Mad Hats, and we're a persistent bunch. We don't need Tails to hide the activity on our operating system if that operating system is on a Raspberry Pi that could be easily hidden in any crack in my house or easily tossed in the fireplace should we ever find a need to do that. But we have, we, uh, we've got nothing to hide, right? <laughs> uh, right? So let's proceed with the Raspberry Pi operating system and just install the VPN and Tor browser that way. So we're going to load the Raspberry Pi operating system on a USB device because our Raspberry Pi has a USB 3.0 port that is a bit quicker than the mini SD card slot. We'll be using the highly user-friendly Raspberry Pi imager. And just like tails that can be easily imaged onto a USB device, this tool does all the work for you. And once completed, you simply plug it into your Raspberry Pi and you can get to messing around. Now, we'll want to install Pi apps to get to the Tor browser app. <laughs> this is simple enough. Just open up a terminal and type this command here. And just like that, you've got Pi apps. Apps. You can open it up, go to internet, browser, and install the Tor browser. Now, head on down to NordVPN. By now, you should have already clicked the link and snagged yourself a sub to their service. And we want the Linux version because Raspberry Pi operating system is based off of Linux. So, we'll run this command here, log in, and connect. <laughs> Easy. Now, we're ready to go onto any dark website we want to access. Luckily, the Tor browser comes preloaded with DuckDuckGo and this handy onionized toggle. Toggle it on and you are now surfing the dark web. You can visit websites like Silk Road. You can, but should not. I would not recommend this because you'll immediately be put on a government watch list for simply visiting the site. I'm, I'm serious, by the way, no cap. Don't do this. All the dark web websites end in dot onion, which DuckDuckGo search will provide for you. You just have to specify in your search you are looking for the onion address. Or you could try Torch, the OG dark web search. Proceed with caution though. Any links on the dark web have a higher probability of having a built-in redirect to malware. And that's how I access the dark web on my Raspberry Pi. Simple, huh? <laughs> now to do what the dark web was intended for. Some anonymous social justice. Oh god. Oh god, they found me. FBI, open up!